coming out today. Uh, obviously, the game didn't go how we wanted it to. We played a uh, very physical Marshall team that was very well coached by Doc Holliday. And uh, it, it's the first time in a conference game this year where I felt like we got out of the school and kind of manhandled around a little bit. Uh, especially in the first half, I thought our defense came out and really answered the bell in the second half and, and finished the game like we've been on our defense to do. We think there's really big things in our defense's future. Uh, really appreciate how they competed in the third and fourth quarter until the uh, very end. With that, I'll open up for any questions. Coach, what did the, without getting technical with it, the official's ex explanation of the slide? Uh, no slide. Um, yeah, without getting technical, what they told me is he started his slide late. Um, what, what I understood is if you're a quarterback giving yourself up, you're giving yourself up. So I'll have to get clarification on that. But that's what I was told. Okay. What's your body status right now? In terms of help. Yeah, so they obviously he left the game, and I don't have an update post game yet. What do you think he provided the offense? Uh, not just a spark, because obviously he did that. He had a little edge to him. I thought when plays broke down, he was able to move the sticks. Uh, I gave him an old Bill Walsh quote yesterday that uh, when the offense is humming, the quarterback moves the sticks at least twice with his feet. And uh, he did that for us today. In situations where things broke down or some quarterback design runs, I thought he was very, uh, very good at it. Yeah, I think that that's a very fair question because the result does appear with the same number. Uh, I guess one more one we had the, the last week, but uh, it felt different. It felt like we were moving the ball. It felt like we were more efficient uh, until we got to that situation late in the fourth. Uh, we just had zero success. I think uh, we got one of nine with Tom and uh, three sacks. So that was familiar. But I think when Giovanni was in there, the offense looked and felt different. Our team has confidence in him, and I have a lot of confidence in him. Confidence in his ability, as uh, well as what he brings to the table and how he commands the offense when he's in there. And I think this week was awesome for our team to get to see him in the huddle virtually every snap. How does the Javon performance being affected how you're trying to go about that position in the next three games? Yeah, the, I don't know that I can give you a definitive answer. I want to see the film, and obviously we have a bye week to work, but you can. Uh, can see that our offense had some life today, whereas last week I didn't feel it did. So those are the positives. I felt that our offense with him in there had life. What made you go with Tom uh, after the players wanted to shake it up? Uh, that was a decision that if Tom was ready to go, we wanted him to be the guy that was going to take the, the next snap, if you will. Uh, you know, I, I think where I got with this offense last week was the definition of insanity. I know what we're doing, the way we're preparing these guys is the right way. Uh, but to do the same thing over and over and expect different results just became crazy. And that became personnel as well as anything we could simplify scheme wise. Coach, one of your rules is not the defensive secondary not to let the ball get over their head. Uh, obviously, it broke down today several times. You know why that happened? Because we, we've been pretty good about that the last few games. Yes, sir. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I can only think of one where the ball really went over our head. There were some catch and run opportunities that the offense had. Uh, the one that's sticking in my mind right now uh, was right after we scored the touchdown. And uh, obviously that was a game-changing play. Defensively, we were induced. We had the opportunity. We should have been in a great position to stop that throw, and we did not execute. You know, that's a great question. Um, there was a couple more shots taken in the second half, and that obviously will have a, a lesser efficiency attached to it in many cases. So that's part of it. I thought what we did and the designs we had to play calls early on were awesome for Giovanni to get comfortable. And I think he did get comfortable. I, I couldn't, without watching the film, really explain to you what was different in the second half. Giovanni obviously, like you said, provided a spark. Uh, but it's been really uh, Rosner and Trammell in the passing game. Anything else um, on the horizon in terms of other players that can come help out and provide more of that push? Gosh, we 
hope so. You know, there's a couple people who are hoping to get healthy, and as you go into a bye, that's going to be one big thing that we look at is who can come and play these last three games that maybe hasn't played as much. It's also why we recruit like crazy. But yeah, those are, are the two that we lean on the most. There's no question about it. And uh, Tram did everything he could to help us today. He tried to make plays, whether it was in the return game, or even if you remember the, the one in the first half on the touchdown drive where he, uh, Jordan Myers caught the uh, screen. Tram blocks this guy out of bounds on their sideline. So he, he is fighting the way we want him to. He's behaving and acting like a cat. Talked about getting guys healthy. This is really uh, Juma's first game of extended playing time. I yeah, I thought he had some really good carries where he got loose. I know he had one that's 14, 15 yards, and it looked like Jumbo again, you know, where he got the ball and made things happen. Uh, even when he played last week, you know, I think we are progressively getting him better and better week by week as he's coming back. Because last week there was a time he got tackled by safety, and me and I talked about it. The expectation is that he won't get tackled by both legs by safeties, and today I think he made people miss and through some tackles. Like we expect. Coach, uh, another weekend, there's still a zero in the win column. But do you ever try to motivate your team looking at Baylor's number 12 in the nation right now, a team that is one possession away from time and end of the game? Do you ever use that as a reference to show what this team's truly capable of? You know, I think we've talked a lot about the great teams that we played early in the schedule and understanding that when we fought them toe to toe, and, uh, that, that should count for something. Because even Wake Forest is a pretty outstanding football team. And so, yeah, we talk about those things. Uh, the bottom line for us is I really want them living in, in one week increments right now. I want them to worry about the things we can control. Uh, as cheesy as it is, I showed up a video of the Lion King where Rafiki hits him over the head. And, you know, it's in the past. And that's what we're trying to make them understand. Like, we can't worry about that. We better learn from it. But we better move forward, too. And honestly, that's all I talked about in the locker room, you know, is uh, nobody wants to work and not get paid. And there's a lot of people putting in a lot of work around here that we're not feeling the rewards right now. And uh, I just need these guys to realize where we were, where we are, and where we're going. And never to quit working for it. To understand that it's going to be worth it. Um, and it's it's still going to take a lot of work from here going forward. Anything else? Tony, I want to bring you up